Uh, I thought, um, you know, I thought early on, I thought uh, the offense did a really good job. Um, you know, we, we, we've challenged our guys to be able to respond early in games. That's hard for a defense because when you think about it, an offense is working all week long, right? They've got a, a game plan. They've got, you know, whatever they want to call it. Usually people call it their openers or their starters, right? And so they've got, you know, their first eight to ten plays of the game that they're, they really feel good about and honed in on. Um, the challenge for a defense but also an opportunity is if we can limit them in the first drive of the game, Right, it, it creates a little bit of doubt in their mind, the things that they've been working all week long. But I thought our offense did a really good job in that. I thought our defense responded immediately after. Um, thought our tackling was just OK. Um, we're, we're running to the ball probably as good as I've seen um, since since we've been here. Um, but uh, but I think overall, uh, from a from a tackling standpoint, those are things that you got to get better at from, you know, from scrimmage one to scrimmage two. You know, I think we're really intentional about um, about having a short-term development plan to get young players on the field. We've always done that uh, in this system. We've always been able to play freshmen because of that. Um, certainly, we're a complicated defense. You know, uh, we're, we do. You know, you look at the top three coverages in the NFL. Um, the you know the last last season we it's our number one two and three coverage right that we're running here now so uh, there's some there's some details right that are challenging for young players right to come in and learn but we feel like we have created a system that is um, simple enough for a young man to learn and then detailed enough really for the nuances as you go right there are certain things that maybe an older corner may understand um, but it's more about offensive recognition or recognizing a split or, or a concept um, that we really spend most of our time on offensive recognition. So the way we install the defense is, you know, we teach them the concept of what we do, never just the role, right? Never just here's what the field corner has or here's what the mic backer has. Then we talk about situational application. How is it applied to third down, red zone, two minute when they need a field goal versus two minute when they need a touchdown, right? Totally different scenarios and the, and the concepts are applied differently. And then what we're getting ready to go into is, is straight offensive recognition. So by the time we get to the season, it's all about when, when the offense comes out in a three by one and the back set out a little bit wider versus tighter, you're either going to get this or this so that we can play, you know, really with anticipation as opposed to reaction. You know, defense is inherently reactionary, so we're trying to play with anticipation. Well, you know, LT um, has a great uh, skill set. You, you can tell he has honed in his pass rush ability. He's got really good complementary answers to his fastball. You know, um, he's a great speed to power rusher. Um, but you just, you know, he's done it probably a million times over his life, right? And he can feel, you know, whether the, the offensive lineman is on his top hip or his bottom hip and know how to counter back inside or outside. So he's a really great on-body rusher is what I would say, right? So that when he gets in to the man, he knows how to, he knows how to counter back very quickly. And, you know, he's 280 pounds, right? So, and can move his feet. So those things are really challenging for an offensive lineman to deal with. You know, I think I think him and Zebo Latham are are really the the frame, right? That's the ideal. Um, that person has to play a four eye. They have to play a five technique. They got to play a nine technique, right? Um, occasionally, right, they'll fall back inside on the run fit. Some of those things, right? They can do a lot of different things. Um, but I'm impressed with their athleticism. I mean, those guys, they can really move. They can um, they do a good job to be that big. Uh, so yeah, I would say from a you know from a prototype bandit. Uh, position the field defensive end that makes things really challenging to, to to establish runs to the field when you have a 280 pound ass kicker over there. So. How, did the, uh, how did the technology piece of things go during the scrimmage and with the yeah. headset communication? Do you see that as a benefit to the offense or the defense? That's a great question. I think time will tell. Um, you know, uh, we're we're, we're different. You know, the NFL, right, they have pictures, so they have a picture, you know, whatever, four seconds before the snap four seconds after the snap, right, in, in high school, you know, they've got, you know, big uh, home screen entertainment systems, right, that they that they work on, right, and, and so then we have the iPads, right, the and all those things. I think 
Um, what it will do is it will confirm, right, for a, from a defensive perspective, hey, did the ball hit in the B gap here? Did it fold outside, you know, our, our defensive end, or did it go inside here? Um, what route concept did they run? Okay, this was a, num a number two receiver on an over route, right? Those are the things that you can just confirm immediately and get corrected. So in that regard, right, you know, it, you never have those moments where you go, hey, on Saturday night after watching the game, right, that, oh, that's what they were doing. Um, good coaches, right, you try to minimize that, right? You try to be a human iPad, right, so that you can see things in real time and make adjustments. And we've taken great pride in doing that. So, you know, I wonder if it will be an equalizer to coaches that can't see in real time quite as well. Uh, but at the same time, right, it's, it's certainly going to be something that we're going to utilize as best we can. Yeah. Yeah, I think what, what I've been impressed with from Bach is that a guy that has played another position, you know, pretty much all of, of high school, the growth that he's made to learn the details of the position very quickly. So he made strides in the in the springtime, but I thought he took his game to another level through the summer and what he's shown in fall camp to where we feel like, you know, he's going to have a, a role for us uh, in this season and uh, had a great day out there today. I mean, he is he's just really starting to hone in and play with anticipation as opposed to, hey, I just got to get my footwork right and all that. He's starting to, you know, um, recognize and, and anticipate. It's, it's good to see. It's been a major spot, you say, from 17 in terms of pressure, also Yeah. You know, when I first got here, you know, that was one of the things that Tim and I talked about was, you know, we, we take we take pride in this defense creating production uh, in, in the defensive line room and on the interior as well. I think Tim has taken to that really well. Um, you can tell that he is um, maximizing value for himself from a pass rush standpoint. He's mindful of it. Uh, we try to give run pass indicators right for our players and then let them call out those run pass indicators. So we may, I may have called a run stopping call, right, that can transition into a pass down uh, uh, rush defense, right? And so they're doing a really good job with some of those communications as well. But Tim's a leader. He does everything right. Um, and he's starting to get rewarded in terms of his production. So exciting to see how that translates to the field. Yeah, great question. Um, so we're doing it with a number of guys, um, but you know, that's really, he's, he's my, you know, he's my voice on the field, right? So it's not just getting the call in, but there are certain things that I may want to communicate to him um, about the situation, right? The understanding of the offense, what they're getting ready to do. You know, honestly, I, I mean, there's, you could write a book on, on the, the headset communication and how different that is from where we were with signaling to where we are now. I think you're going to see all things over the spectrum, right? You're going to see some people that still do all the signaling. You're going to see some people that are going to try to go exclusively uh, to the headset communication. I think there's a fine line there because the the you know it cuts off at 15 seconds, and so what happens afterwards when you know an offense is going to make a check? You're going to see some offenses that are going to go really fast, um, and I think that's going to be helpful for us on defense because I can immediately get a call to the core and they can communicate to about seven or eight guys immediately. Uh, when teams are going fast, you're going to see some teams that wait until under 15 seconds and then they go. So now the defense is back to the normal signaling. So it'll be a cat and mouse game. I'm really, uh, I'm excited to see, you know, how to navigate that. I just, I want to stay ahead of the curve. I'm sorry. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I think. Mo Linquist does a tremendous job from a technical standpoint. Uh, he's, he's one of the best teachers that I have seen. I think those guys are very fundamentally sound. Even those young freshmen, they don't look like freshmen out there in terms of uh, what they're doing from a fundamental perspective and their, their footwork, their hand placement. Very detailed, very organized, um, and, and very intentional about their individual time. And, and I think it's showing up in, in practice right now. Uh, what I'm excited probably to see is some of those younger players are playing with anticipation. You know, defense is inherently reactionary, right? So the offense comes out in a personnel formation, whatever, um, and we react to whatever those things are. But if you can say under this personnel and that formation on third and six, right, now it's either going to be this or it's going to be that. Now we can play with anticipation. I think the corners are leaning into that right now. How's Jihad doing? What have you seen from some of those? You know, Justin, both Justin, really. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think, um, you know, Jihad is such a versatile skill set. I think he came here as an outside linebacker originally um, and then, you know, made that tra transition to inside linebacker. That is not an easy transition. I think people just hear the word linebacker and think it's about the same. They're, they're different worlds playing the outside linebacker and inside linebacker uh, position. I think he's really done a great job of understanding the details that it takes in the run fits in the interior, the communication piece to get everybody else lined up as well. I think, uh, you know, Jihad's another guy that could be a green dot type guy for us. Um, and so, you know, what, what I've been impressed with some of those younger backers um, is, is they you know, they see a standard of Jihad Campbell and Deontay Lawson. I think Justin Jefferson is really playing at that same level. Um, and so those guys are really pushing every single day. But uh, it's a hard road as a freshman linebacker for us right now. We put a lot on those guys and demand a lot of them. So, you know, it's back and forth every day. All right. Thanks, guys. Roll Tide.